Well, that was short-lived, so um, just a little heads up. I was recording this video, and it seems like I did the whole video, and I wasn't even recording, even though the mic was going off. Anyways, welcome to Xenoverse 2, which is a game that I didn't think that I was ever going to play. Uh, I absolutely love and adore the Dragon Ball Z saga and series, and everything about it, the characters, just how long this series has been going on. And this game is a game that came out some time ago last year, uh, October, if I'm not mistaken. And it's free this weekend for Xbox Gold members as of going up, oh, as this video going up, I don't know how much longer it's going to be free, if it'll last tomorrow or whatnot. But this is a game that completely just, um, just rear-sighted me, I guess is the best way to describe it. I haven't played a Dragon Ball Z game for the, oh, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, for probably about a decade. And that's absolutely nuts to say that I haven't played a Dragon Ball Z game since, um, man, I'm 21. So I haven't played a Dragon Ball Z game since... Uh, 2007? 8 maybe? That's, uh, well, basically a decade. So it's, uh, it's been a very, very long time, and I haven't played or seen the majority of the games, uh, that have come out since. I don't even know about many games that have come out since for this, uh, series, but Xenoverse 2 is a game that is tons of fun. There's so much you can do in this game, and what I mean so much, I mean an abundance of things it's insane from customizing to unlocking abilities unlocking stuff for your character gear clothing um you can mix stuff so uh for an example like let's say you like one piece of clothing but you like another piece and they both have uh, also clothing has stats so you like the stats on both of those but you don't know what to do with them well you can combine them it gets rid of them but it gives you this thing called a qq bang which you put on your character so you could wear any other clothing that you want, but those two pieces of clothing that you got rid of because you like their stats are permanent for your character now. It sounds a little confusing, but that's an example of the level of customization you can do in this game. I didn't think that this game had anywhere near that, like, just level of insanity that this game provides you. And the amount of stuff that you can learn and the amount of stuff that you can do from, uh, these, they're called mentors. So, uh, like, for an example, you can learn under Vegeta or Broly or... Uh, Frieza or Cooler, just a, like a bunch of evil characters or good characters. Tien, Yamcha, Piccolo. It just it just ranges to a bunch of other standards. And to learn from these people, you have to do these things called placement tests. Each placement test puts you in a bracket. So these brackets go from like beginner, uh, intermediate, advanced, and then after that it's Kai and then something else, and I think God. So these are like the uh, once you reach these levels, you unlock new mentors. So once I think I'm Kai right now, if I'm not mistaken. So once you hit Kai, you get mentors that otherwise you wouldn't have had if you were in advanced, uh, if you were in the advancement uh, class. And then once you get to God, you get uh, mentors like Broly, which I kind of want because each mentor gives you. Well, once you talk to them, each mentor gives you certain abilities, and you can use these abilities on your character uh, in a way that either you're. Well, first of all, you base your character customization or your abilities off what you want to do personally. So if you want to be a striker, which is a melee character, you're going to want to build a striker. Uh, I was going to say striker subclass. Stupid destiny. <laughs> you're going to want to build a striker build. So you could do things like um, invest these things called attribute points, which every level, every time you level up, you get attribute points. And you put these attribute points into a sort of skill chart. So um, the skill chart ranges from how much health you have, stamina key meter which is all in the top left corner on the screen as you're looking at um, the power that your basic attacks do so your melee your fist the power that your strike attacks do which are uh, things like that how can assault or in the bottom right corner meteor crash or super dragon fist uh, and if you know anything about Dragon Ball Z or have any played played any Dragon Ball Z games in the past decade or so you've seen all these abilities before because they've been in other games um, full power charge which is the other ability lets you recharge your key. The thing about that is that you don't unlock that immediately. You have to earn it. So you have to get placed in a placement uh, for you to do that. So again, it's just, uh, just a crazy amount of things, customization, things that you normally probably think that you wouldn't have to do in the game, but you do have to do. And then there's shops that you go to uh, once you hit certain levels or do certain things in the game. What, sorry, once you hit like a barrier, you get these um, ways to unlock things. So um, Basically, uh, you do a mission or you do a story mission, and then once you go to a shop, they'll be like, oh, you're able to buy this now, and you could use this type of ability. Same thing with, again, with when you see a mentor, these mentors give you the, their abilities. These are abilities that they use. And even then, if you do a little bit better than everyone else would do, so what that means is you get a higher ranking. So, like, it goes, you know, D, C, B, A, and then S, and then Z. 
So like let's say you get a Z rating. What this might mean for some missions, not all missions, is you unlock their ultimate ability. So this will be like um, Cooler's ultimate. So like if you've ever seen in the movies when Cooler, he puts his finger up in the air and he summons this giant ball and he throws it down. You can unlock that as an ability if you get a Z rank on one of his missions, things like that. So it's things like that that give you even, I guess, more emphasis on wanting to play and wanting to do better. And you also have to remember the fact that some of these missions get harder. Uh, even if you're like a rank 30 or something like that, and the mission's like rank 30, because uh, you could check out their mission, or you could check out the character's level in-game. Uh, the enemies, you'll press like a left on the D-pad. It pops up a scouter and it looks at them and it shows you what their level is. It gives you an understanding of like, hey, well, this guy's level 30 and I'm level 30. But why the hell is this mission so difficult? Ah, uh, that beats me. Honestly, it seems like this is like a way that they, I wouldn't say balance it, but... Uh, they seem a lot harder than level 30s when you're in the 30 brackets. So um, this gives you, again, the emphasis on, oh, well, this guy's level 30 and I'm 30. So I'm going to go do a bunch of the other missions. You can do things like side quests, which are everywhere. And I mean everywhere. I mean everywhere. I mean the amount of side quests that you can do is staggering. Um, you can do side quests for basically every person in the Dragon Ball Z universe in this game. You can go to different, I wouldn't say planets, but you can teleport to different locations where you'll go and you'll do things for them. Like one of the weirdest things is you can go to Majin Buu's house. You can feed Majin Buu, give him food, and I'm not exactly sure what this does, but it's a, a, an example of a side quest that you can do. So out of your spare time when you're doing missions, you see that you picked up food, you can, you'll be like, oh, I'm going to use this to go to Majin Buu's house. You'll go to his house and you'll drop off the food. He'll eat or whatever his little, he has a bar of, uh, it's called fullness that goes up. And then you'll go about your way, do a bunch of missions, get a bunch of food, go back, things like that. And um, same thing with uh, Guru's house. Guru's house is a Namekian planet. Uh, so basically, Piccolo, Piccolo's planet. So what you'll do for this is you'll, the first time you visit him, he'll be like, would you like to protect our planet? And you're like, sure, I'll protect your planet. And he's like, all right, well, every now and then we're going to call upon you. We need you to come and you're going to help us collect Dragon Balls. And you're just like, pretty much fine. You'll get a notification every now and then. And you're pretty much warned that, hey, come pick up our, we need your assistance to get these Dragon Balls. You're taking it from us. And you're like, all right, fine. So you go, you go, you know, um, finish whatever you're doing, go to the planet, go do the mission. And it'll be like, oh, planet safe. And it'll be like, oh, thank you for doing this. Things like that. Um, just an example of the level of just mission structure in this game is staggering. There's so much you can do. There's so much you can unlock. I didn't even touch the classes and just the um, <laughs> the missions, the, the campaign, uh, the multiplayer, the raids. Um, yes, I said raids in Dragon Ball Z. Um, so much content in Xenoverse 2. This is such an amazing game. And if you do have the chance to pick it up, I highly suggest it. So <laughs>